At saltash.net community school, Dave Garland is taking a year seven science class. We're carrying on with our work on the interdependence of living things and we're going to be looking at animal classification. The objectives today, you're going to help produce a mind map and I'm hoping that by the end of it you will understand how classification works um, and also you're going to be thinking creatively because we're going to be using the MindMaster software um, and you'll all be working on the same mind map. MindMaster is a website and it's free for up to five mind maps where any user can go in and create interactive mind maps and then share them. In order to get started using the live presentation tool, Dave splits the class into groups. Now, what I want you to do when we're making this mind map is I want you guys on this side of the room to focus on the invertebrate branch and you guys to focus on the vertebrates. So you're going to have to decide, you know, who's going to focus on the birds, who's going to focus on the amphibians. Because what I would like by the end of this lesson is to have an absolutely fantastic mind map with, of animal classification with lots of examples, some pictures, maybe some web links, some descriptions, some information from books that you found out and maybe just typed into text boxes. Okay? The students add information to a joint mind map. Work done by others in the class instantly appears on both their screens and the interactive whiteboard. I'll do. Cameras. Okay, um, how about you two work on birds? I can't go. And um, okay, okay, um, you. Okay, uh, you, you and Jack can fish. Look it up. Have you got a book to check, guys? It's underground of classification. No, wait. Here we are. Yeah, well done. That's the page. Yeah, so, like, what did you say, Alex? Vole. Vole. So, what voles are an example of what type of animal? Are they a fish? Are they a. What are they? Mammals. Mammals. Sally, can I save this picture? Yeah. Could I um, add it to the... Yeah, if you save it to your My Documents. Yeah, if, if we'll let you save it as a picture, as a JPG or a bitmap, that'd be fine. You guys OK? Is that a way of classifying the vertebrates? Check it against the textbook. Do a bit of research, yeah? You can go onto the internet and use a search engine. OK? Um, guys, can you please be very careful about deleting what other people have put in? Yeah? I will review it afterwards and find out who's deleted what. MindMeister allows you to record as a video the work students are doing on a mind map. I found out that yesterday somebody had deleted somebody else's node. And I know who it was and I'm not saying. OK? But just remember, if you do accidentally delete something, fine. But please be careful with other people's branches on this mind map. OK? I think the main advantage is, as far as the students are concerned, is the amount of collaboration and group work that goes on because they absolutely love working in groups. Rather than using PowerPoint, I think my Meister, um, you can see different people's changes as well as just your own at one time. It's quite fun adding pictures and everything. And when I when I add something and I look at a friend's my, my Meister site, and I can see the um, piece that I've added, and it's really cool could use it as I used it today with uh, 23 different students all contributing to one mind map um, but also you can use it to produce one in advance um, as an exemplar perhaps. If as a teacher you're a bit worried about using MindMaster as a presentation tool or if you're just worried about using ICT or technology in general I'd say don't worry about chasing the technology because technology is moving on so fast that you'll never be able to catch up with it. Just allow the students to use it and to learn from it and you'll be absolutely fine. At South Farnham School in Surrey, Catherine Monk is using PowerPoint with her Year 6 class to consolidate the work they've been doing on the rainforest. We started by recapping what we'd done over the term, so not just in terms of the ICT learning today, but also in terms of the science that we'd learnt, the geography we'd learnt. Then I focused in a little bit more specifically on what they'd been learning within PowerPoint and how we'd used PowerPoint to present work. So what do we think about this slide then? Jo? I think the colour's a bit dull because it has a white background as well. So maybe a bit more elaborate, like a yellow or something that fits with the white background. What about this third slide? It's a bit too dark. OK. So I, might, I think she might need to change the colours like a, red, a reddish colour so it's a bit lighter so you can see it. 
Exactly. We've looked at colour, we've looked at font size, we've looked at font colour, we've looked at the size of the font, the type of font. So when you go back and do your own presentations and edit them and improve them further, think carefully about the font that you're using, think carefully about the sound, think carefully about the image that you've got behind it. I would spend no longer than about 10 minutes on the carpet to then give them the maximum amount of time on their presentations. Tree folks live in the rainforest. Once they're playing around using that particular program, they start inputting things into their presentation that you hadn't necessarily told them to, but it's still within the objective that you'd set them and the success criteria that you'd set them. So I think more and more children are more intuitive in terms of their confidence at playing with a program and being able to use specific aspects of it to enhance their own presentation. You could try yellow. A lot of the programs that are out now are easier than people think and I think all it takes is time to play and I know time is very, very a very precious commodity when you're teaching but I think ICT does enhance teaching. I think you've got to be very careful as to how you use it to make it sure that you're using it in the most effective way to enhance the teaching and learning for the children and to ensure that they're learning these skills that they can then take on in other lessons and, and use in, in the coming years.